Hello friends, this video on Organic Chemistry Part 36 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now let's understand the nucleophilic substitution reaction. So nucleophilic substitution reaction is the one where the attacking region is nucleophile. Right? So here we have two types, SN1 and SN2. So SN1 stands for substitution, nucleophilic and one means that means only one that is is responsible for the reaction, the rate determining reaction step is depend on one. There is a substrate here. You can see this. So if you see the example here, for example, there's a rich lady and a rich guy here, right? And the nucleophile should attack. So let's say there's a nucleophile here. But this is expected to attack this lady, right? Since this is weak, maybe, maybe this is weak, or maybe if she is strong, but there are security guards here, right? So even if she tries to attack her, she will not be able to attack. Correct. She'll try her best, but she'll not be able to attack. She's trying her best, but she's not getting any position, right? So this lady is free. This attack can only happen, or this or common lady will get this seat, this seat, right? Only when this influential lady gives the seat on her own, right? When if the, if the seat, if the, she gives the seat on her own, then only this common lady can attack. Correct. See, this common lady won't be able to attack. Why? Because maybe this is powerful or maybe this attack, maybe maybe this, they, they both are of equal power, but if she's you know, having the security guards there, we will we'll say what are security guards here. These are the methyl or ethyl groups attached uh, to it, which which uh, creates uh, what do you call less space, steric hindrance we call actually there also. So there can be so many reasons, right? Maybe this uh, uh, the one which she is trying to replace is a strong lady or she is uh, protected by the security guard, she is not able to attack. The only way she can seat, get the seat is if this rich lady leaves this place. If this rich lady leaves this place on her own, then this common lady can come. But here if you see, the rate determining step is this lady, right? So. This lady, if this lady leaves this place, then only this reaction happens. Correct. If this lady won't leave this place, even if this the new uh, this uh, common lady tries, she won't be able to get this place. That's what we have seen. She had tried so many times, but because of the security cards or so many factors, she was not able to get the same. So the rate determining factor is the the rich lady leaving this place, right? And so it is called SN one reaction. This is the concept. Term. Correct. So here, this is the this lady which decides the reaction correct so we'll see this reaction so this stands for substitution as stands for substitution and stands for nucleophilic and one represents unimolecular that means the rate determining step is unimolecular you see in this case only one step determines the reaction rate for example this guy br minus is the rich and powerful group right so even if OH minus is trying to attack here, right? OH minus is trying to attack here, right? Because of the so many factors, for example, the steric hindrance, right? OH minus can't attack from here, can't attack from here, can't attack from here, right? Because of the steric hindrance. So this will not be able to attack this carbon because the attack has to be done on this carbon. See, this carbon, if you see, this is the carbon here. And this is my CS3, this is my... CS is a bulky CS3 group and there is a BR. Attack has to be done from here, but if you see these are protected, right? So OH minus is not able to attract. It is as good as security guards, right? This reaction won't happen. The reaction will happen only when this bromine will go on its own. Correct? So the rate determining step is one where this bromine go, goes on its own and it forms actually this guy. So this is my rate determining step. Correct. So if you see this reaction, the rate determining step is the step and this bromine goes on its own. So this is very slow process. This is very slow. This is the because this is bromine, this is uh, a what you call it, privileged one and it won't it can't be attacked by OH minus, right? So now when it is bored and it wants to leave, it leaves. So if it leaves, it forms Br minus and this carbocation and this is very slow, this happens rarely. So this is a very slow step and this is 
if you see in the chain right the weakest link is the uh, the side the strength of the chain here also in the reaction the slowest steps beside the rate of the reaction for any chemical reaction this is very slow this determines the state and this is the only thing substrate that design that determines the rate of the reaction so it's called unimolecular because only one thing determines the state of the reaction so once this is done when once you get this carbocation so once you have this carbocation OH- can easily attack this and this is very fast so rate determining step is this guy correct and thus if you see right OH this is H2O actually which attacks then gets this and H3O plus comes out and again you get this or if you're confused just just uh, attach OH- to it you get something like this okay. now in this case experimentally it is seen that even if you if you increase the uh, concentration of substrate the rate of in reaction increase like this but if you increase the concentration this is concentration and this is rate this is concentration and this is rate so if we increase the concentration of uh, attacking reagent here my nucleophile right the rate is same even if we increase the concentration of nucleophile the rate is same so that means the rate is independent of nucleophile rate depends only on substrate and that's why it's called SN1 1 stands for unimolecular that means the rate depends only on one of the molecule that is substrate correct the next type of reaction is SN2 right where the concept is so I have my uh, rich guy and a common lady sitting here in a bench and they are forming a bond and let's suppose a rich lady came here and she wants to sit here so what she can do is she can just kick her out right because she is a powerful one correct maybe there is no security guard here and she is powerful she is able to kick her out right so in this case the rate is determined by two things one one rich lady coming in here right rich lady coming in here and the second thing is this common lady going out right maybe the common lady says no I won't go out so in that case also it is a little difficult right so both should happen the rich lady should come and the common lady should go right so the rate depends on two things now please note I took the lady as nucleophile so in this case the rich lady came and the common lady went so the rate depends on two factors right the rich coming of Rich lady and going off common lady. So it is called SN2 reaction. This is the concept. So the same thing if you see here, in this case, this was my nucleophile and this was my substrate. It came here, it attacked in this portion, forms an intermediate. This is my intermediate. Intermediate. And now if you see, this went off. This is a common person. This is a common lady actually. This common lady. And this yellow is the intervention lady. Right? So this came. And there was a form, there was a stage where both were there actually, if you see here, right? So if you see, there was a stage where both existed. And then this moved out. Same thing, right? There was a stage where both were there, right? This is the intermediate. And then this common lady moved out and this strong lady straight, influential lady straight. And we got this part. Here also we are talking about a substitution where the attacking region is weakly fine, right? Let's take example of this or let's understand this technically. So here you see the lone pair from the nucleophile attacks the electron deficient electrophilic center and the bond to it from back side. So for this to happen if you see from back side there has to be enough space. If there is no enough space the reaction won't happen. Correct? So there is a nucleophile which attacks the since the nucleophile it will attack the electrophilic center from the back side correct and this happens in one step only one step if you see here this guy OH minus here this guy is BR if you see we have HH here so steric hindrance is less right so OH minus can attack because if you see uh, we have only one methyl group and others are hydrogen so there is more space so OH can attack from here back side so if you see OH attack from back side we are already there so in this case there is a tussle now this is the intermediate intermediate right this is the intermediate and then with that the bromine left because bromine is a good living group so in this case 
there are so many factors. First thing is there has to be space for attack, right? Space for attack. The second thing is the living room has to be good living room, right? Good living room. Correct. These two factors are mandatory for this have to happen, right? So. Space to attack and the living room should be able. And this happens only in one step. But if you see the rate determining step is both the concentration of substrate and the concentration of attacking reagent. Correct? Because both are responsible for this reaction, right? Because this guy attacks, OH minus attacks, then only BR leaves. So the concentration, the more increase the concentration of OH minus, the more reaction will happen. Since this is also a part of reaction, right? So both are responsible, and that's why it's called. Two is standing. Uh, two stands for bimolecule. That is, both substrate and nucleophile are uh, are responsible for the reaction. Correct. So here, the slower rate is this guy. Right. So two reacting species are involved in the the slowest rate. That is the one which determines the rate of reaction. So it is called SN two. Two stands for bimolecular nucleophilic substitution. Correct. This is the same thing I told. There is a place to attack, so this nucleophile attack from behind, and there is an intermediate form here, and then this guy leaving root left, and you part this substituted product. Correct. And also, I told experimentally it is observed that the rate of reaction both depends on both substrate and back in region. For example, you this is concentration, and this is rate, and this is for let's suppose substrate. So increase the concentration, the rate is increasing. Same thing, this is concentration and this is rate. And let's suppose this is for nucleophile. So here also you see that you increase the concentration, the rate increases. So the rate is dependent both on substrate and nucleophile. So we have seen SN1 reaction, we have seen SN2 reaction, right? So in both cases, we told we saw almost same. Scenarios: a nucleophile attacks one compound, similar compound almost, and some ha have SN one reaction, some goes to SN two reaction. Let's understand which factors uh, determines whether the reaction will be SN one or SN two. So, what our observation we see is uh, we saw is so in SN one, if you see the nucleophile is unimportant, right? Because the rate re determining step is when this leaving group leaves. So, in SN one, the nucleophile is unimportant. But in SN2, the nucleophile, strong nucleophile is required. This is what we saw. Also, we saw that when both SN1 and SN2, good living group is required. We also saw that in SN1, it is okay to have steric hindrance because it doesn't attack from back, right? But in SN2, steric hindrance should not exist. For example, if I have this kind of compound, right? So these are R groups, alkyl group attached. The, the nucleophile can attack from back. So SN2 reaction won't happen. But SN1 can happen because SN1 depends on if bromine leaves on its own, it will create a cations and OH may attack here. Right? So in SN1, it is okay to have steric hindrance, but SN2 steric hindrance should not exist. Correct. Also, we saw that protic, protic solvent, for example, water, alcohol, carbon solids, they favor SN1. And a protic solvent favors SN2. Correct because in protic solvent, if you see this influence, this leaving group leave early. Correct? So they favor SN1 and E protic solvent favors SN2. And also, since SN2 is a backside attack, so if there is a stereocenter present, so SN2 will give inversion of stereo chemistry. We'll, we'll talk about this, we'll take some example. In SN1, since you already get the cations here, and if the substrate had serious enter also, you will get the mixture of retention and inversion because the attack can happen from both sides because it's, it's a cation now, right? So it's a cation, it's a planar cation actually. You see in this fashion, right? This is a planar cation now. So attack can happen from this side or this side, both sides, correct? Right? But if it is a serious enter, let's suppose all are different. Then this is H, this some other, this is some other, if it is a, if it is BR, 
if it is SI2 reaction, the attack will always happen from this side. So it will always go for inversion, correct? But if it is a SN1 reaction, if you see, so the cation is formed, once the cation is formed, the nucleophile can attack from this side or this side, both because it becomes planar. It becomes planar in shape, right? As I told, carbocation is planar in shape, sp2 hybridized. Since it's planar, the nucleophile can attack from any other side and it can have retention and inversion or both. But in case of SN2 reaction, since the attack is from back side, it will always have inversion. This happens only in case of st if stereocenter is present. Let's see if we can guess if the reaction is SN2 or SN1. If you see in this reaction, there's a big steric hindrance, right? So big steric hindrance means what? OH- minus will not be able to attack from here. Since it will not be able to attack from backside, that means SN2 is not possible. Correct? So the only possible is SN1 reaction. It's tertiary. Also, if you see in tertiary, it's, it's not able to attack from here, backside, because it's all steric hindrance, right? No space. So it will be SN1. Let's see this reaction. So here if you see, I have good space, good space to attack, correct? Also this is a strong nucleophile, strong nucleophile plus space to attack plus Br minus is a good leaving because conjugate conjugate weak base. They told Br minus is a weak base, right? So these three factors say that this has to be SN1 reaction, so SN2 reaction. You can attack from back, right? Strong nucleophile and it's good living. So it is a SN2 reaction. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.